for this week's outlandish comparison. Today we are comparing Dragonfly Amber, chapters 25 through 28, to episode 207, Faith. If you haven't watched the episode or plan on reading the book, please be advised that I'm going to spoil some things. So, you've been warned. In our book and our show, we see Claire at Hospital of Angels, and this was very beautiful to finally see on screen. I loved how they just showed Claire basically freaking out, just going crazy, saying, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Where's my... Just screaming. It was so intense and emotional, and it you absolutely felt for her whether you've had a child or not she was just so torn apart physically and mentally from losing her baby and mother hildegard ends up baptizing the baby as faith that's the name that mother hildegard gives to the baby and it's it's very beautiful that mother hildegard in the show says it's illegal to baptize a baby who's stillborn, but I did it anyway, you know, because you're my friend and I care about you. And we also see her bring in the priest to kind of absolve Claire of her last sins because they're not sure if she's going to make it. She's sick. She has a fever. She's, she's not doing very well at all. And something I thought that was really special in our book and our show was how Mother Hildegard sends the doggy Bouton to sit with Claire and just kind of watch over her and guard her as, as kind of like a companion and you lost your baby, well here's this puppy. And it was just so special to see that. At the end of the show we actually do see Claire holding her stillborn baby Faith and it's just so intense and emotional because it, it hurts to watch it and she's singing to her baby and it just really tears you up. One of my favorite parts about our book and our show is this next section where Master Raymond heals Claire. It's such a mysterious thing how he actually heals her. He's just kind of putting his hands on her and a blue glow comes around them and he just kind of sucks her fever out of her and whatever else is wrong in her body by touching her. And it's just this amazing, magical thing to watch. Now, in our book, we do actually wonder, is Master Raymond also a time traveler? And Claire thinks that, so she asks if he has a vaccination scar, and he doesn't know what she's talking about. So as a reader, I always inferred that Master Raymond still could be a time traveler, but maybe he came from an earlier time and the future for him was the 1740s. So I'm not sure, but it was always a very interesting thought to think about Master Raymond possibly being from another time and just having some sort of magical powers. The other thing I always thought was just a beautiful imagery when Master Raymond says, the glow around you is blue, like the Virgin Mary's. In both our book and our show, we definitely see Claire very, very angry with Jamie. Now, at first you're feeling angry with Claire for Jamie breaking his promise, saying, yeah, I'll let Randall live for a year, and then he doesn't. And then Claire, from just the emotional stress of it, she goes into premature labor and hemorrhages and her baby is dead. But once you figure out why Jamie broke his promise to Claire, you're totally on Jamie's side. At least I am because when Fergus is telling Claire the story of what happened with him and Randall at Madame Elise's, you just, you're trying to not cry the whole time because it's already bad enough that Blackjack raped Jamie and now he's raping a 10 year old boy. It just hurts you so much to hear and you totally understand why Jamie's like, no, I, just, I can't let this person live and keep doing this to people. 
One of the most interesting episodes in our book and show is when Claire is granted an audience with His Majesty King Louis. What is very interesting about this is King Louis actually believes that Claire is La Dame Blanche, the white lady who can judge the character of someone's heart and turn it to good or turn it to evil. That she can see the true nature of someone. So he brings her in as his judge of character between Count Saint Germain and Master Raymond. And one of the things we had, if you remember from before, Claire has this cool necklace that Master Raymond gives her as kind of protection. In our show, we actually saw it change color, which was really, really rad. Our book was a little bit more open to the reader wondering, was this real magic that happened? Did something in the universe actually want the Count dead and it just happened? Our show was slightly different because we infer that Master Raymond actually did slip something into the Count's drink. So that's a slight difference, but it was great to finally see this on film. And something that the TV show did that I thought was very cool was up until this point, we have not heard the Count speak in English, period. He only speaks in French. But now, as he's about to die, he says some stuff in English. So it was a very interesting element that they chose to add into the show. When Claire realizes that Jamie is in prison, she goes to Mother Hildegard for advice on how to get him out. And the only thing that they can really come up with is petitioning the king. But Mother Hildegard says, are you sure you want to do that? Because if you ask the king for something, he expects to lie with you. That's just how it is. In our book, Jamie is extremely upset with Claire because he suspects, yeah, my wife had to have sex with the king to get me out of prison. And he's so mad at her about that. But she just tells him about how she was La Dame Blanche and had to judge between Master Raymond and the Count and the Count dies. And basically says, ah, oh, nothing else happened. But Jamie, he just knows intrinsically. No, I know that wasn't the way it is because he... He's an intelligent man. He knows how the way of the world works in the 1740s with the French king. So he, he comes to Claire and says, why did you lie to me? And Claire says, I wanted to hurt you like you hurt me. Now in our show, Claire just actually comes right out with the truth. And she doesn't lie to Jamie at all. I vastly preferred this week's TV show to our book. As a longtime reader, I probably read this maybe 11 years ago, and my one bugaboo with the entire series, the one thing that I would have changed through all eight books was the fact that Claire lies to Jamie about having to have sex with a king to earn his release from prison. Jamie never lies to Claire. He's always honest, and the fact that she lies to him just makes me want to punch her. Just the one time, I just hate Claire for it. And our show fixed this. I don't know why they chose to fix it. I don't know if Diana had gotten backlash long ago when the book had come out and people were mad, but I was mad, and I was so happy that the TV show fixed this. Claire didn't lie to Jamie anymore. And they can keep their one element of their marriage that they always agreed on, which was, I think there is room for secrets in a marriage, but not for lies. It makes me so happy that Claire is actually honest. I want to thank you all for watching this week's Outlandish Comparison. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, and I will see you all next week. I'm a very happy Outlander watcher this week. By far my favorite episode from season one or season two. I am just elated with the show this week. So on a good note, goodbye. Islands and seas, mountains of rain and sun.